love. I see mansions in the kingdom. I see hunters slaying demons. I see fire on this earth coming down like Hiroshima. I see prophets rising up, prophesying scriptures cut. I see Christ, he coming back. And he black, he look like us. I see it, I see it, I see it. We are not a hate group. We're not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that, that if anyone hears of knows any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. Hey, shalom, Israel, most high in Christ. Bless. Welcome to another edition of the Late Show, Precept to Palm Precept. We are your hosts. My name is Captain Shim. Officer Matthew. Officer Micah. All praise to the most high. Officer Mikhail is doing some of the Lord's work this uh, tonight in, in travel route. So, like we always start the show, but before we can, we plug the QR code. This is the new thing in Israel. I know a lot of us are still not used to it, even though it's been doing for weeks and weeks. You ha I hear it. I'm in different congregations, and I see people not taking out their phones. I'm watching y'all. Take out your phone. Scan means to take a picture. Okay, like, I can't find the scan button on my phone. Look at the dog on the QR code, lower left-hand corner. Take the picture. If you can do it now or at the end of the show, click on it, and this gives you a couple questions to fill out. Why? Because we want to know how we're doing. We are trying to grow, and we don't grow without feedback. So with that, Hey, take it away, Officer Michael, with the Watchman Report. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless. Good evening. Let's get right to the articles. A lot going on. Mexico's president says he won't fight drug cartel on U.S. order, calls it a Mexico first policy. So he's saying he ain't fighting drugs. Hey, you don't let him in. Damn. Next article. What we know about the Moscow concert hall attack. I don't know if y'all saw what's going on, but um, they walked in and started just lighting people up. So um, there's a lot to read in that one. So go check it out. It's about nine minutes to read. Next article, please. Abortion is once again before the Supreme Court, this time in peel form. Key takeaways from Tuesday's landmark hearing. And scroll up, show the picture. Let's see who out there protesting. That, there, you, there you have it. They never learn. Next article, please. What we know about the Baltimore Bridge collapse. So a boat hit a bridge and the bridge collapsed. Uh, all praise the Lord and our family was... Um, Injured. So next article, please. Last but not least. Majority of Americans disapprove of Israel's war against Hamas. So I guess people are getting hip to what's going on and they are not approving what's going on with that war in Israel. So this concludes the Watchman Report. <laughs> Hey, Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Israel. Welcome to another edition of Precept Upon Precept. And you know what it is. This show tonight is all the last five days in the news. It's about, we can pull our thumbnail, and I'm going to just basically uh, shout out to Mikael, officer. He creates these using AI graphics. So, as you see here, you got uh, the team on the left. Um, and then on the right, is that Candace? Okay, that's AI. It doesn't look exactly. That's it's Candace Owens, right? Um, doesn't her nose is a little wider than that. She, she, I think this one. I don't. I think she's pretty in real life, to be honest with you. Um, you see a nice looking sister. Then you have the the title Candace Owens, courageous intentions from a misguided sheep. I'm gonna repeat it again. Courageous intentions from a misguided sheep. Why? Because to the center. You have two images. The far right is Cesar Bogier, who is the commonly foreseen image of white Jesus, 
who when Officer Matthew was in Africa and I was in Africa, do you not see that almost every where? Please, you were there for over a month, brother. Who knows better than you? Put up on Officer Matt. Hey, Caesar Bow is everywhere. You know how they got these the Negroes that like to talk about this pro Africa stuff and black man stuff and nah, bro. They worshiping white Jesus over there. They got it on. They got it on the they they buses. They got it on their cars. They got it on their churches. They wear it around their neck. They sell it on the street. All white images. And we'll get mad if you tell them that's not Jesus and that Jesus is black. Hey, do me a favor. I, I, if you can get this. When Deacon and them went to Rome, Bishop Nathaniel, and Deacon, there was a guy. Deacon Malachi just said casually, look, man, you don't get up. Man. You can you get that clip? Because I'm going to show you how powerful that image is. And it just came to me just now. I didn't have time to send it to you. I want you to put that clip, um, the thumbnail back up. If you find that video, I can say. So to the right, that's so-called Jesus. And when I was in Africa years ago, I want to say like eight years ago, I could not believe. I thought it was a joke. Literally, when I say every street, every, every street, everywhere, there was an image of white Jesus. And you were in a 99.99% all-black country. It was amazing. Now, the center image in between Miss Owens is this, the image of the Israeli, uh, I'm going to put it correctly, when you are a, when you are, what is it called? You are a Zionist. A Zionist, we covered that last year. These are Zionist, Israeli, Jewish, uh, Caucasians. That's their title. God calls them the Edomites. Uh, God calls them Amalek. They are at the heart of this sister getting fired. We're going to prove that tonight. But we're going to show you that this sister is in love with the white man on the right. Name is so-called Cesar Bogier. We're going to prove that today. But you're going to find that some of the things that she says is bold. And a lot of stuff is true. So can we put this? This is so you. This, this really happened. This, when I saw it, I thought it was like a, they, they staged it. This is real. Okay? Watch this. This is the power of white, white Christianity, a.k.a. white supremacy, being manifest to a young man, can't be no more than 35 years old, defending the white man. Yeah, you seen it before. We got we to show it again. On and on. You just said you. You got attacked. You got attacked. You a black brother got mad and tried to attack Deacon Malachi. Yeah, we're leaving it though. We're leaving it inside this uh, basilica. Mm -hmm. We're inside the basilica. Nothing but Edomites around. The only Israelite there besides us is a brother that's deceived by false images. Says was here, and he has a picture of him. You gotta imagine this brother is. There's a reason why he's actually. Sitting down. Now, I, I see I see a lot of open chairs there. I don't see any crowd there. Why is that young brother sitting on the floor? We're going to play on. I'm going to show you the reason why he's sitting on the floor is because of his mind. Play on. Of yeah, yeah. Boys here, he's on the ground, so we go to take pictures of him. So Deacon Malachi goes up to him and says, hey, bro, you know Jesus ain't white, right? No, get away, don't blaspheme here. You don't blaspheme. How dare you come here to blaspheme the name of Jesus? Inside. No, get so out. The thing. If you look in the back of the officer map, Mike, you can correct me. Aren't there images of brown Je black Jesus in the background? I could be wrong. Yes. Right, so yes. <laughs> let's, let's think yeah. about this. Please comment. This, we got a black man. All Deacon Malachi came in is made an observation. He, he could have been a stranger, makes an observation saying, you know, Jesus is not white. Because if you know Jesus is not white and you know that the walls prove it to you, 
why would you sit in the position? When white people come into church, they don't sit on the floor. That's the point. Only blacks and Hispanics sit on the floor. Damn. The, hey, that was a heavy point, Cap. The brother was sitting on the floor with his hand on his head. Like, just just soaking in the, the memory of white Jesus. Like, basking in the ambiance. <laughs> <Did you, laughs> hey, did you see the tenacity? That's I think they call it xenophobia when you hate your own kind. Yeah, yes. the tenacity the Negro had to it. He was thrilled to attack his own. Somebody looked like him. They like, all oh. instantly. I gotta defend the devil. I got to fight to the death for the devil. He yeah. really, if he really, that that's worse than crack. The brother didn't realize that you attacking right. multiple men. Mm-hmm. And you in there by yourself, but in his mind, white Jesus is gonna save him. Hey, all he said was, "Brother, you know, you know, you know, he's not white, right?" Yeah. And he, you're he, blaspheming. Get he, out of here. He didn't say it in a disrespectful way. He came up. He didn't say, "Hey," he said, "Hey, bro, get up. You know, Jesus is not white." It should have been okay. Well, what do you mean by that? You know, it should have been refreshing news. It should have been news that should have been liberating and not frustrating. So that just came to me. Well, that's been played before. It's not new, but it's important to remind us why we must continue to teach this truth. Now, tonight's show is about Candace Owens. I want to start with Wikipedia, if we can first, because a lot of people don't really know a lot about Candace Owens, other than she seems like she's a Republican Trump supporter. She has a little bit deeper story than that, and I really, um, well... (laughs) We're going to find out. Play on uh, Wikipedia real quick. All right. While we wait for that, get me, give me Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And if you want, Micah, to make it easy, you can have one of these tech guys read if it's easier. Or it's up to y'all. Because you could sound strong. You could sound courageous. You could even sound like you are biblical. But if you don't have this it doesn't matter what you say, how strong your words may sound, how bold you may be. You must have this. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Uh-huh. And be not conformed to this world. So you can have black people in this world that will sound strong, that will even look the part and sound very, very um, intellectual, very uh, studied. Read on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind must change. Like the black brother in the Roman church in the Basilia, also like the black man in the Christian church, like the black man in Islam. If he does not change, read on. That ye may prove what is that, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're going to find tonight Candace Owens proved certain points that are biblical. But there's a couple of major points where she completely is misguided, right? So pull up Wikipedia if we can. Um, Very good. Let's start first with her early life. Early life and education. Born in White Plains, New York. So just so some of you may not realize, White Plains, New York is just right outside of the Bronx, New York. White Plains is about 15 minutes from the Bronx. The Bronx is one of the five boroughs. You got Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and Staten Island. Matt, you from Staten, right? Yes, sir. So, as he was born there. So, when we say the five boroughs, White Plains and Yonkers. You ever heard of DMX? DMX is from a place called Yonkers. Yonkers and White Plains are a little bit north of the Bronx. They are still basically New York City. So, she's from basically New York City. So, she grew up... From the Northeast, fast talking, that's the way she, you're going to see, she's sharp with her tongue. Read on. Owens was raised with her siblings by her grandparents from around the age of 11 or 12. So what you're going to find is that she fits the stereotype of what happened in black households. She was born in 89, I think it was, or something like that. Um, Okay. Hold up. Not yet. So she was something happened in 1970, early 70s, with a court case called Roe versus Wade, in which abortion was elite, was now deemed legal. And what happened? You started to see the divide of the black household, and also the increase in the number of divorces in the black household. Candace Owens fit that description. Her black parents got divorced, and you can't find nothing on her parents. I looked. 
You can find anything you want on her husband, some stuff. You can't find anything about her biological mother and father. It's interesting, which is you should be able to find something. Read on. Okay, 1989. After her parents divorced, she is she is the, she is the third of four children. She said her paternal grandfather, Robert Owens, a black American, was born in North Carolina. So this is very important. So let's think about this. She, I'm going, I'm going to make my point. This why, why is he taking so much time? It's just her early life. She had a black biological father and a black biological mother. She had three black. Uh, siblings, and she was the third of the fourth. Now, so meaning she had two older brothers or sisters, right? She was third, and then she had a younger, um, and it doesn't say who, you know. Robert Owens is is probably the most influential person in her life. We're going to get back to him later. He was a black American. Come on. Owens is also a Caribbean American heritage through her grandmother. Right, so her, she Judah, but she has Benji in there, read on. Who was originally from St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. Mm-hmm. She is a graduate of Stanford High School. I think she got bussed in. White Plains is no more than a half hour from Stanford. Stanford is the very west of Connecticut. All right, I'm, I'm from that greater area. So she went to a very, Stanford's a pretty prestigious high school. She was living in New York. Now, read on. In 2007, while a 17-year-old senior in high school, Owens received three racist death threat voicemail messages. So she actually was on the receiving end of death threats. It was actually a hate crime. Okay? So she is was born and raised in the Northeast, outside of New York City, went to Stanford High School. She's a city-talking, fast-talking black woman who was raised by black parents up until the age of 11 with three black brothers and sisters. All right? Read on. Totaling two minutes from a group of white male classmates which included the son of the mayor and future Democratic governor, Danny Malloy. So I want to show you, uh, Mr. Malloy was a um, Connecticut um, official. And they covered that thing up. Uh, those of you who know about Malloy, well, you're not going to always get Connecticut. But anyways, so she won a lawsuit because this guy threatened her life. And, and they swept it under the rug. It was the son of Mr. Malloy showing you where did the son... Of the Democratic governor, not he was a he was a governor, excuse me, but he was official before that. How does the son of Dan uh, Danelle Malloy learn about racist hate crime death threats? Well, his father and their grandfather they were slave owners indirectly, and furthermore, he he uh, he grew up learning these niggers this, these niggers that. That's how his son learned. And they won the settlement. Read the last line real quick. Owens' family sued the Stanford Board of Education in federal court. State court? Federal court. Uh Uh-huh. Alleging that the city did not protect her rights. Which they did not protect her rights. Why? Because they protected the rights of Malloy's son. Read on. Resulting in a $37,500 settlement in January of two, January 2008. A federal judge looked at the, the facts and deemed a settlement because of what happened to her. Um, read on. We're almost done. Owens pursued an undergraduate degree in journalism at the University of Rhode Island. I grew up, I grew up very, very close to there. University of Rhode Island is a, a world organization, a world university where they have a graduate program. People come from all over the world. It is a uh, global school, and she went there. Read on. She dropped out after, after her junior year because of an issue with her student loan. So she obviously was not raised with money because if she was raised with money, you try to tell me she couldn't get a bachelor's degree? No, she had issues with money. Fiscal. Hey, yes, sir. This sounds like a lot of nigga issues. Yeah, yeah, black. She, right, yeah. She, she, black. she the, yeah. The, the third of four kids. You got racist death threats. Get out. You had to drop out of college because they messed up your student loan or an issue with your student loan, which you had to take out of student loan because you just couldn't buy your way into college. And you damn sure didn't get no scholarship. And you're raised by your grandparents. And you're you raised by out. your grandparents because your mom and your daddy divorced. I'm t- the reason why I'm going to show you is because a lot of people, a lot of... A lot of black people. And when later on in the end of the show, she drops the ball completely. But this is a black woman, fast talking, that grew up in the Northeast, outside of New York City, 
who has been through, has been a, a, a proven victim of racism, hate crime. Parents got divorced, couldn't finish. You said it absolutely perfectly, Officer Matt. And lastly, why, why, why then is she misguided? If she has all the things needed and, and been through the things that a black American woman would be through, why would she do what she does? And I want you to keep it. Why is she misguided? Because after you hear her talk, you're going to be like, damn, she's sharp. Because if you really listen to it, she's sharp. Now, way to come back to Wikipedia. Hold that. I'm building a case. Now, I want you to pull up the first video. I'm going to see the sister in action. If you ever see this, there's a black, there's a brother named um, Killer Mike. He's a rapper. He's, a, he's, a, he's fatter than Gabe, by the way. He's um, morbidly obese, but Killer Mike is sharp. And she blazed up a damn panel. She blazed T.I., the rapper. She destroyed him. Um, no, actually, hold up. Don't give me that real quick. I'm sorry. Hold up, hold up. That's my fault. Get me. I, I'm going to show you her in action. Get me the one that says, um, dropping facts, record label control and morality. It's a short. I'm going to show you how sharp she is. She sees what we see when it comes to black immorality in music. And this is a short clip. What? And you can remember how she grew up. Outside of New York, talking fast, parents got divorced. She had to learn how to fend for herself, right? Watch, she's sharp. Watch her. You don't want to look at me? Okay. How do you feel about your culture and what they do with music? I stop, think stop, stop, real quick. When they say, how do you feel about your culture? They're saying, what's the problem with black people? That's what they're saying. Okay. Yes, sir. The fact that they said... How do you feel about your, your culture? culture? Right. Like I accepted it. I'm, uh, you know, like like she accepted it. Like mm -hmm. she said, you know what? This is who we are as a people, and I'm standing behind this. I hate when they do that because then they're implying that we automatically accept it. Right. And so what she does, and this, I'm telling you, the, a lot of these Edomites, they got. I mean, she sounds right wing, but what she says, I don't give a damn how much these white folks like her. They can't stand her, but they love her. If that makes sense. Watch this. So she owns it, like you said, Officer Matt. She owns it and she frames it up and she sends it right back to them. Play. It, it's it's a part, and I've talked about this on my show. Who owns these? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. One thing I also want to say is this: I have not seen her one time with weaving her hair. She rocks. She, I think she do a pressing comb. I think she put the stone on the coat. She put the, the the metal comb on the stove. I believe she does that, but she does not wear weave. Um, her hair is pretty much always short, and I watched the images of she pretty much is as natural as you're going to see. Okay, play on. It's a sexy red. You you can go out and you can buy you can get one. Yeah. I think it's a part of it. It's it's a part, and I've talked about this on my show. Who owns these record label companies? Who signs a sexy red? You, you can go out and you can buy, you can get any artist in the world based on their talent. Why, when you, why is that when you come to black America, you want to platform someone like Sexy Red when it used to be you platform people like Lauren Hill? This is intentional. This is intentional because, you know, as Confucius said, Chinese philosopher said that, you know, what is in your ears will eventually be what surrounds you, right? Music mm -hmm. is, music yeah, is very... Quick. Now, Confucius, then you take religion, that's a Chinese type of um, Confucianism. But that's in the Bible. Get me, um, oh, it just came to me. Get me vision. It's Proverbs. Where, the, where there is no vision, the people fall. Um, um, if you could help me out. She's right about one thing. If you keep, if you don't have a vision, the vision that you are going to be fed is going to be your reality. That's why you have black men that get tattoos all over their body. That's why you got black men that will think to shoot another black man without even really understanding the situation. So watch this. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Thank you. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you have a vision that's being catered to you by your enemies, because she said something heavy. The, the A&Rs and the record executives that run rap are not black men. They, they allow some management levels, and guys like, by the way, Sean Puffy Combs, what he's going through right now, a lot of that was fed to him, and he learned them ways from, from Esau 
Now he's going to be the fall guy for what, what he's been doing. And a lot of stuff he's been doing was wicked as hell. The point is, read it again. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And that's why original royalty records is so excellent. Because we have the flavor. We have the swag. We have the style. But we have the law of God. That's why our musicians are happy. That's why they talk about things that have content, godly content. And it's run, operated, and owned by black men. Period. Now, now I mean Hispanic as well. Shout out to Captain Zakai and all the brothers from Aurora. We got an OR put over here. We got an OR. Everybody, know, Matt, the truth is on original. And by the way, you could have published your stuff 11 years ago. Did you tell your story? You waited because why? Well, when I first came in the truth, I didn't know that they was doing music. Um, first person I heard was Deacon Abiel. After that, it was Narai Judah. And then my wife was like, they doing music. Are you going to do me? I'm like, nah, I need to know this Bible first. Before, because, you know, music in the world is very competitive and you got to outshine this person. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do this with the wrong spirit. So I said, look, I'm going to learn this Bible first and then that's it. And once I know this, then I'll know how to purvey a message in music. And I waited five years. I came out, I think it was Tabernacles 2018. Yeah, was that it? was your first year I moved up. I remember yeah, that first Tabernacles year 2018. They did Don't Call Me Black No More Challenge. And that's when I like officially took the stage and rapped. And and it's some, the reason why I say that is because um, you've got all of these artists today in the world. They're misguided and they have a leadership structure that is looking to degradate and demoralize and ultimately destroy the black community. So when they asked her, how do you feel about your culture? They're putting her on the spot. She took it. She owned it, and she flipped it back and said, listen, the reason why you get a sexy red instead of a Lauryn Hill, okay, or in the rappers, when I was coming up, you had guys like KRS-One, guys like Dougie Fresh, guys that were talking about Chuck D and them. They were talking about the political um, fragments of society, and, and that slowly went away. Now you got niggas talking about killing each other, and women talking about uh, they – they still like to have sex even though they got a venereal disease and brag about it. That is such a low estate that we're to. Okay? So is that it on? Um, hey, Cap, real yes, quick. Um, music, because I went to school for music industry studies at Loyola University. And none of my professors were black. Mm. All of my professors were white. And they all taught you how to manage artists, how to be an entertainment lawyer, how to be an artist management how to be um, artists and repertoire, what they call a and &R. They taught you all of these different things. And what they gear toward is trends. Whatever's trending, that's what's going to go. They look at, they have think tanks that look at trends. The tight pants was not an accident. Mm. The, the, the purses that men wear now is not an accident. All of these different things are planned well in advance and all they do is just put out their uh, messages and images to make the people accept it. That's why social media is used now to promote all of this stuff. Sexy Red mm -hmm. came. Isn't it funny how she came right after the abortion video? Mm -hmm. Oh, we did. Uh, what's that? That weird looking sister with the head of teeth fixed. Um, Glorilla. 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 She's talking about. Baby daddy free or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F nigga free. F nigga. We did a show on that. Yeah. And um, she had a screwed up mouth and she got her. Um, that sister right there is. And listen, I, I say this because my brothers and them is from the projects. And I've seen the projects. I've been in the buildings. I've been in there. All that before rap music glory. I've seen it. It is not a place to be raised. It's not a fun place to be. And I know so many brothers and sisters that came out of that that ain't not that ain't like glow real and ain't like they are they are really go-getters and they became something they had to go to the army to get out they had to go they went to college they got out and they got out and they never forgot where they came from now they ain't in the truth now unfortunately but they're not like like everybody that come out the projects is like that. that's not true there's so many more positive folks that's mm -hmm. the worst example from the projects the worst example from the inner city is a sister like glow or they're the worst they're the worst of the worst. And that gets published 
and celebrated a bunch of you dumb Negroes out there who don't understand your history. Now, I, you said something heavy. Trends like tight pants, trends like um, camel toes. Pull up the video of black conservatism. Candace Owens, we, we talked about it before. We did a show and we talked about black debutantes. We've got a, a footage where Candace Owens, I'm just giving her a character, she's looking at the conservative moral values in the 1930s, I think it was in Harlem, New York, and they, they, they remastered it in color. I want you to look at how black people, our people, look at how, but she got a natural hair. That's natural. She got the, you know, she ain't got no long hair. And if you see full featured, this is she. She can't hide the fact she black. She that's a sister right there. She looked like nose, she right looked there. like old girl from a Bronx tale a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, she do. <laughs> Yo, and she and his, this is why I'm going to save to the end. This is why I cannot believe what she did. When you're going to find, you going to say, what is he talking about? Some of you never really know about it. She to me, as I'm listening, I'm like, yo, this is the pro black. She like the blackest of the black. Raw, like Black Panther, put a black glove on her, throw a damn side hat on her, all right? Watch this, play. It has always been a historically black neighborhood in New York City. I'm going to show you images of black America. Again, this is when there was racial segregation. So what we are seeing here, again, this is the 1930s in Harlem, is a certain decorum, civilized. Pause real quick. So if we look at this sister here, who's got her hand up over her lapel area, she's probably between the ages of 53 and maybe 62. Notice her long apparel. It is conservative by nature. She's holding a book. And what, what black women used to do before this stupid uh, Roe vs. Wade and all the moralities of the 70s onward, they used to cover up their bosom area, and especially when they were passing men. And if you talk to your grandmothers and you talk to them and ask them, why did women do that? And they say, well, when we passed boys, we would take our books and put it over our breasts because the boys were not even able to look at, at the silhouette of our bosom. And they wouldn't call them titties or nothing. Excuse my language. They would say my bosom. That's a respectful conservative term for a woman's um, anatomy, right? So let's, let's continue to play on. It's That's the only word that I would use to describe what and we boy, are seeing. See how that brother walking by? Rewind a little bit. That brother Damn. is walking, he's upright, he's not, his, his pants are not hanging, and he's walking left, right, left, he's upright, he's probably 20-something years old, he's, right. he's got a, a little tie thing on, and he's got, you know, one of the trends was you put your hand in your pocket, and you kind of just, look, look at how this young black man is walking, all right? This is in the 30s, this is after, <laughs> right after the Great Depression, and this is Harlem, New York City, which is Manhattan, the borough of Manhattan. And this full of black people, All right? Yeah, there's a white cop there, but play on. Only word that I would use to describe what we are seeing: black Americans dressed to the nines. Who knows where they're going? Probably pause. to dress to the nines. Mean we had style. Look at that brother back there in that tuck. Go ahead, Michael. Let Damn. it out. Look at that brother right there. See, the thing is, you didn't have to just go nowhere. You right. was coming no, no. outside. Okay, well, I got to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Michael just sit, pointed out. Look at the brother. I got to send you something. Y- y'all gonna laugh, but. I like this guy, and I, it, I gotta, you got, you're going to appreciate this. I'm about to send you something real quick, and um, say something off some Matt Rook. I got to send this to you. Hey, you know what it reminds me of? Y'all remember that movie Harlem Nights? Yes. yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Taylor uh, made the fit. Sugar Ray said, you know, he, he had the cop in his, uh, in his apartment, and the dude was like, you know, uh, wh- wh- where do you get your shoes from? You know what I'm saying? He was like, I dress off the rack. He was like, what? Your, your clothes, they fit you so well. He was like, what about you? You don't, you don't buy your clothes out the store? He was like, nah, this is tailor-made to, to fit. fit. <laughs> so I got to say, listen, this is a brother who is unfortunately Christian church, but I, I like the guy. I really like the guy. He got a little flavor. And it just reminds me, like, I can imagine him coming out of, he's like a country version of Harlem. We've heard this before, but I like the guy. And i just showing you that this, this is a guy that, you know, Put a beard on his face, and y'all, you're going to laugh. It's, it's enjoyable. Press play. It's, it, it's no editing because this is my man. This is my man right here. Play him. I 
got a sound mind or not insane. Come on! I ain't gonna preach too long. I ain't gonna take the service too far. My sermon in the morning. Hell to the no, no, no. Now, pause. <laughs> now, the reason why I like it, we know he's a key loss in Christianity, but if you see, he decked out. And that's a lot. He's dressed to the nines, like Candace said. That's the way our people were. And he just, I just had that video for humor purposes. I made me laugh today. Um, but there's still a sense of uh, grace when you look at the way that man's dressed. And, um, you know, so go back to the Harlem video. The people took him serious, Cap. Mm. Th those were people to take serious. Like when they opened their mouth, you listened. Nowadays, I'm not listening to Lil Uzi Vert. If that dude was to walk up to me and give me, he could possibly have the best life information to give me at that moment mm -hmm. of my life, I would not listen to it. Even the scriptures say, a wise word out of a fool's mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Like, I would not listen to you. Like, like the joke that uh, Cat Williams did about Flavor Flav. You're like, you, you know, there's just certain people that you can never learn from in life. Mm -hmm. Like if a dude right. coming at me with a Viking helmet right. and a big clock on it with the wrong time, I, like, I, I can't learn nothing from oh, this dude. These dudes today, I'm, can't walk up, the nigga got a ski mask on. I'm, right. put, I'm putting my, my, I'm taking my wallet and I'm putting it in my sock. We, this, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he, come on, man. We, um, in, in Jim Crow, during pre-1966, black people had more morals uh, than we ever had. And here's the point. We, we did a show about this month, years ago, where there were the, the, the time in history was called post-reconstruction. Um, right at, from 1865 to 1895, there were more blacks in both state federal and local government than any time in history and that includes today in 2024 why because we were fresh out of slavery we all had the mind we were free we wanted to do and guess what we were republicans at that time we were republicans at that time uh now go back to the video because i want us to look at the visuals rest to the nines who knows where they're going probably to work of course, during this time, black American families were together. You see police officers. Pause. That's the whole point. One of the arguments she makes is they start to destroy black people by destroying the values of the family. And it goes back to Roe versus Wade. It goes back to um, single parent households. And the way that you remain in your welfare estate is by not having a man in the house. You saw it with the show called Good Times a black family that lived in Cabrini Greens, a sh Chicago suburb, which I believe some of us torn down right now, and um, a very, very, very low estate, and they were able to keep their money. Uh, Florida was able to keep her money and her benefits as long as James was not in the house. And they had inspections, and you saw the show. That was in the 70s, okay? Now, say again? They rebooted the show, why? What does that mean? So they, they made a, a cartoon version of Good Times? Oh, but our show's still up right now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I, th oh, yes, sir. I thought Akim said we just went down. Damn, Akim. No, 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 they okay, they rebooted Good Times. Wow. Good. All right. Well, it's too much truth for that. Same thing with the movie Claudine. This I, th I thought the show was down, so I was looking crazy. Now, can we run back one more time? I want us all, to, as you at home, I want you to look at the Harlem Remastered Digital, and I want you to look at all of the, the look at uh, they, the, the, the head to the toe. Look at how all of our backs are straight, both the men. Just look at the, the average black American citizen walking around the streets 90 years plus ago. Now, almost a hundred years ago, and if you was an alien from out of space, this people, do these people more, look more advanced? Do these people look better off? Or the people, black people love today? Ask yourself that. Okay? Rewind it again.
always been a historically black neighborhood in New York City. I'm going to show you images of black America. Again, this is when there was racial segregation. So what we are seeing here, again, this is the 1930s in Harlem, is a certain decorum, civilized. That's the only word that I would use to describe what we are seeing. Black Americans dressed to the nines. Who knows where they're going? Probably to work. Of course, during this time, black American families were together. You see police officers on the street, but it doesn't really seem like they have much to be doing. Because as I said, these black Americans have a certain decorum to them. The gentlemen are wearing hats and suits. The ladies are wearing dresses and heels, also wearing hats. It's not a place that I would be fearful to travel alone, whether it was daytime or nighttime. My, how time has changed. So, Officer Mike, you see you got a scripture. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll read it. Ezekiel chapter... Which one? Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 14. And thy renown went forth among the heathen uh -huh. for thy beauty. For thy what? For thy beauty. They, they, notice she said the cops didn't even have nothing. They, they had nothing to do. Right. They looking like, yo, what the... It's hard to, to spray people like this with water hoses when the brother, she said they were dressed to the nine. That's right. You look at the dude coming out today, the Negro holding his pants up, smell like weed smoke. Read on. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Uh -huh. For it was perfect through my comeliness, Come on. which I put upon thee, saith the Lord the God. The Lord had us decked. Al, you read back further in the chapter, he talks about how, like, the broader works and things of that sort. For time's sake, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. But he explained how we were always decked out. We went, like, this vagabond where, like, the, the stuff they doing today, we never rolled like that. Right. That's why when you see our people like that, it's a shock to a lot of people now. But we always rolled right. in, nice, in nice clothes. So I'm going to show you how the degradation of our moral and our dress code Change and then also that is the first step to take away. Then it, it our minds get destroyed. Number seven, trans uh, transgender men having babies. Candace Owing is, is debating a black radio person. I don't know this guy's, but y'all probably know his name. And this she's standing like she's a 1930s. She has the mind of a black woman like in the, in the 30s, right? Well, you're gonna find out later on that she that. Just, she completely drops the ball. I'm going to build it in the show. But watch how she has a stronger mind than the black man sitting across the couch from her. And she's trying to show, brother, what are you, what are you talking about? And this guy is, is literally thinks he's right. He's so far gone. And it, it literally, this guy, who's this guy? Lamont. Lamont, right? <laughs> Isn't the guy got fired? Yeah, that, but, but he... he he just like her. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, he'll speak on some truth, but then, you know, slide back on over to the wild side. And he goes around and around and around. Like, he, he be sharp sometimes. So he like he, he pro-black because he got a Harriet Tubman shirt on, right? <laughs> okay, so, so that means if he got a Harriet Tubman shirt on, he honors and respects slavery. So my question is, I want you to think about this open-ended question. How would Harriet Tubman react to Mr. Lamont's version and understanding about transgender men. I wonder what Harriet Tubman, if she could sit right next to him, would say to Mr. Lamont. Remember this, because this is right to make you sick. Play the whole thing. I'm not going to stop. Pregnant. Uh, depends. I know, I know. What does I, it depend on? I know trans men that can get pregnant. That, that means it's a woman. Only one sex can well, get that's pregnant. That's a circular argument. That's it's not a circular question. argument. Yeah. It's proving my thing. There is a truth, a concrete truth. You have to be born with a uterus to have a baby. Only women can get pregnant. The fact that we've arrived in a society right. that's the part I'm disagreeing with. That's the part I'm disagreeing There's with. There's nothing to disagree with. It. These are facts. So you can say that this person who is pregnant identifies as a man. That person was born a woman. I can tell you that every single time because only women can have sex because there are concrete truths about life. Have babies. That it, that, can, can, I mean, can have uh, babies, pardon. And that, that is a hard truth about life. You cannot make that go away because you want to call a man, somebody who has a beard and dresses like a dude a woman. Only if it's pregnant, I'll, I can tell you exactly what it is. It's a woman. See, brothers yeah. like that, Cap, you know, the, you have the breakfast club thing that she said about the IQs. No, I, I, we, we can get that. We can get that. Look up the Breakfast Club interview with, with her talking about IQ. She says, I, I didn't marry because of race. I married because of IQ. No, you use debate. If you basing black men off of Lamont, like, you tripping. Black men, real black men know that we don't do no trans nothing. We don't even drive trans ams. 
<laughs> like, right. come on now. Like, we don't do none of that trans stuff. That's not us. We wasn't raised to accept that. We was not. Like, we got, we're, we're young black men. We were talked about and ridiculed if we acted effeminate or feminine or scary. You had to be masculine. You had to show forth that you could handle yourself out in this cold, cold world. So I'm going to show you why some of the things she says is biblical. The one thing in her life, and she, she makes a comment about it and talks about it. There was a black man in her life who was married to her grandmother, which is a black Caribbean woman, who instilled these values in her. Give me the image of her grandfather. Because this, the, this is where she got her, a lot of her understanding from the age of 10 and 11 up until she graduated college and subsequently um, for her formative years. Let's call it that. Okay, so that's little sis right there. All right. She, that's a fireman carry. That's Gramps right there. All right. That's her grandfather. And her sister is actually being asked to be pulled up. Now, if you notice, he's kind of dressed like they were in Harlem, okay? Um, and he's from North Carolina. I'm going to show you a video in a minute. He actually did, uh, was a sharecropper. He was born on a um, sharecrop, and he did uh, pick cotton and as a young, as a child. So there she is smiling, um, and, and, and that's a strong, uh, I, I, I don't know everything about it, but I can just assume that he married a black woman. He had black children, and he's taking care of his black grandchild um, because, remember, the parents got divorced. So he's got to be strong to take in his grandchildren because they needed a stable place to live. Remember, we read about that before in Wikipedia biography, right? Um, so now, show the other image, please. So you can see there are certain things that they learn, like etiquette, learn how to sit at a table. Grandpa made sure, there he is again, and, and it's a different picture now. All right, Candace is the sister, the, the light purple that's going to be to the right. If you notice, he got curly hair, right, woolly hair. She got woolly hair. So she was raised by a strong black man that taught her, you love your hair. Your hair is beautiful. You don't see Candace Owens bleaching her skin. You don't see Candace Owens uh, wearing uh, Conco 1B or whatever damn brand they got now. You don't see her uh, putting yellow hair in her hair. She does have, uh, I would say, a certain amount of respect about her blackness, if you will, if I could say that, right? So now, remember this now, because later on in the show, I'm going to show you where she completely falls off the freaking horse. Hey, but Cap, it's ridiculous. It, make, it makes sense, though. Like, it makes sense. She does an a, a excerpt about uh, the 1930s. She always talks about the degradation of the black community and, you know, how women dress, how men aren't men anymore. They don't carry themselves like because she had an example of a man mm -hmm. in her life and a woman in her life. Her grandparents raised her, yep. her and her siblings. So she was raised old school. That's right. So she has old school values. It's not necessarily Republican, right wing, left wing, whatever wing it is. It's old school values, and that's what she has. Do me a favor. I asked you earlier if it's possible. I want a black debutante video because we're in the 50s and 60s, we had these black social clubs where you had, now you might saw on the bourgeoisie, but they had sisters, and you'll see mostly all of them. them if she's 20 pounds of weight, they consider that fat. If you compare the way that they dressed with the rates of obesity, it shows you not only did their their dress code morals plummet. Also, their eating habits, because there wasn't a lot of black women that was fat like damn um, Fat Albert in the 60s. Okay, not a lot of them at all. Commercial break? All right, I want to see the debut, debut time, please. Hey, all right, go ahead. Go ahead, Cap. So while we wait for that, I want you to do me a favor. Um, I got to wait to pull that. I'm going to, second half of the show, I'm going to show you. Right now, I'm showing you that right now, she seems like she's courageous. She's, the, the name of the show is Candace Owens a, with a courageous intentions for a misguided sheep. Right now, we're showing you the courageous intentions she has. 
That's the first part of the show. You know what it's reminding me of, Cap? You know that Willie Lynch uh, letter, and it says that their mind is going to constantly try to revert back to that history? Mm-hmm. It's, that's what it seems like is going on with Candace Owens. It's like, yeah, her, her you know, her spirit is like trying to cleave to some sense of mm-hmm. pride in her people. But it's hard to feel pride in your people when your people are at a lower state like today. Mm-hmm. And you see that, and they're happy with it. That's the biggest thing. Like, our people are, are happy, and they congratulate and celebrate the failure that we have now. So get me, Hosea, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is very important because black people um, actually – Get me before hold that, Isaiah five fifteen I believe it is. Get me um, the lost sheep, uh, Jeremiah. We have become lost sheep. It's Jeremiah fifty. Jeremiah fifty. Lost sheep, or maybe it's Jeremiah forty nine. While we wait for the day, Jeremiah chapter fifty and verse six. Black people. When I say black people, I'm really the whole show is really about Judah right now. But Judah represents the the nation of Israel, right? Black people represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. My people have been lost sheep. So just like Candace sees her people are lost, what she doesn't understand is that for her to truly get the understanding, she got to acknowledge that she's lost. She thinks she irie. She thinks that she's good in their position. Read on. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Right. And who was her shepherd coming up? Her shepherd coming up was her grandfather. Helping her, giving her the little bit of understanding how that it used to be. Because remember, her grandfather was raised by her great-grandfather. So he's getting the wisdom that, that he had from people that lived during the time of the Harlem Renaissance in the 30s. She's getting all of that cultural values, the conservative values, the black. She, she was raised seeing a black man and woman in the same house. Then one generation later, her black parents got divorced. You can see the degradation of society. You can see it happening. Read on. They have turned them away on the mountains. So what does that mean? Turn them. So on the mountains of these governments, the law, the leaders of the pastors are supposed to be guiding them how to survive and how to thrive in a land that's not yours. That's what the Christian church has done to our people. Remember that. Now, get me the other one I want you to get, please. Hosea. Oh, Hosea chapter four, verse six. Thank my, you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, meaning what? That's how you have a sister. And you know what she's going to realize this? A sister like Sexy Red and Glorilla, and there's a lot of other sisters, they're going to have their year or two of fame. Later on in life, when they end up alone with no husband, they're going to have a reality check. Wow, I let these people use me for money. And I had the opportunity to stand. And that's what all they're going to be me- remembered for is their, their sh- short, short-lived, fast, quick money. And they're going to feel, they're going to feel it. And they're misguided and they're destroyed because why? There's nobody guiding them. If this was a righteous industry, there would be a m- group of men around the table. And women might be there as well saying, this is the agenda that we want to push for black America. We see that there's single-parent households. Let's put a lot of content out, like an AR, an AR officer match rep, um, talked about. How, what do we do to, to create a better culture? Well, let's write a lot of music about successful marriages. Let's r- write a lot of music about having a healthy two-parent household. And you can make it sound cool. Let's push that. And then all the artists, we find the best representative, the best sounding, the best talented, and put that to the public. That's what a record, a record leader, a, 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 someone in the record industry who wants to help his or her people, that's what they would do. All right? Read it again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that knowledge is the laws of God. Read on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. And that's the problem. Because when we, like for example, sister like uh, Candace Owens, she is, it, it will, it's hard to get a word in with. When she gets you, she gets you. So when you, I agree with nine, 90% of what she said, but after the show, stick around. She's misguided because what she did is she fell from the, the very path that she talks about. She fell from that. And her grandfather, if he was alive, would be, I believe he would be ashamed and embarrassed. Okay, read on. 
I will also reject thee. And that's why if she doesn't repent, like you black men, I don't care how good you sound, Mark Lamont, Candace Owens, if you are any of these, Shaquille O'Neal, all these people that got power, notoriety, and money, if you do not come to the laws and knowledge of God, you will always be the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and you will always be misguided. You, doesn't matter how you sound or what you try to do, no matter what you quote, how many books you write, you know, how many millions of that, you will always be in that number who are confused and you're lost. Read on. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Yes, sir. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Right. And I when we forget the law of our God, what do we do? We start serving man. Read on. I will also forget thy children. And that's why we the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the children of Israel. So with that, we're going to go to our commercial break. Uh, we're going to forego um, the Bible verses, but right after the break, Officer Matt's going to drop righteous music with Kingdom Music. Then we're going to go back to the second half of the show, and then we're going to go to Laura Back Attack. So stick around with us, and see you after. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, man. We're almost high in Christ. Bless. My name is Captain Shem, IUIC New Orleans. Help us to grow. YouTube page, subscribe, like, share, hit the bell notification. And now it's even easier, y'all. Hey, and also part of New Orleans camp, we got the community cleanups. Cleaning up our neighborhood one at a time. What y'all waiting for? Subscribe. What are you waiting for? Subscribe and follow us on all social media accounts. We got TikTok, we got Twitter, we got Rumble, and YouTube. Make sure y'all follow our UIC New Orleans. Tell me Hey, also, we got flyer missions every day and also camp videos. Check us out, IUIC New Orleans. So remember, go to our YouTube page, subscribe, like, Share and don't forget the QR code. When the QR code comes out, don't forget to take your phone out. Five, four, three, two, one. Why isn't it done? Come on, girl. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, Bless Officer Matt here with Kingdom Music, giving you the righteous music of the day. All right, so this next one is from Bishop Kanai's album, a.k.a. The Pen, called Journey to Freedom. The, the, the listening party was fire. It was off the chain. I was there. I was blessed to be there. All praise to the Most High. And uh, look, let's get into it because this album is fire. Now 
Bruh, fire, fire, fire. That is Journey to Jerusalem from the debut album of The Pen, a.k.a. Bishop Kanai, Journey to Freedom. All right, the album is fire. The music is fire. It's, it's, not, it's like nothing you've ever heard before. As you can see, we got the saxophone, got his own solo. All right? So, all praise to the Most High. That has been Kingdom Music. Let's get back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a ping, ping. We're seeking your we're seeking your assistance to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. All right, take out your phone and scan the QR code. Thank you for your time. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Hey, shalom, shalom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Do me a favor. Um, like we always do, let's, re, let's show the thumbnail again. Those of you just joining us, the first half of the show, we showed you. Hey, listen, Candace Owens, that's an AI image, okay? Um, Candace Owens has courageous intentions. She has a certain amount of values and morals for being a black woman, and she's not satisfied with what she sees in the media. Now, the second half of the show from a misguided sheep. What makes her so misguided? Well, we're going to find out as the second part of the show. Pull up the black debutante, and then I want number two. Number two is, is the best video that we got, okay? Let's, let's, let's put the framework. So this is actually after the 1930s. Real quick, pause real quick. I'm sorry. So this is a regular thing. This is like a black debutante ball. And you can see the men and women are sitting at the tables. They have the women all have. There's not one woman in there that has a pair of pants on. I can guarantee you that. And they're dressed formally. And even their dance, uh, there's probably no twerking, gyrations, or, or you know, making it pop and drop. I mean, you, you could see. And these, these are, they've got soul. They've got, and they've got curves. All right, play. They kept because these women didn't like to sweat. Right. They, right. they, back in the day, my grandma used to say, women don't sweat, they glisten. Right. Look, look at the light skinned brother. That's a brother right there. He got his hair all full of black, all kind, shades of black, all yellow, all the way to chocolate. Okay. Look at, look at the style, man. I mean, Today, people, oh, they look too, too. No, I like, that's a nice thing. They're not grinding all up on each other. It's very classy, respectable. That's how families are started. And I would argue that, that this is definitely before Roe versus Wade, and I would have probably, the divorce rate was significantly lower, and there were uh, a, a lot more fathers in the household. So this is a wonderful thing to see. I love it. Because they all are wearing long dresses. They look, they, they, and if you look at obese wise, they're very, if, they, if any, they may be slightly overweight, a couple of them. That's the way the shape of a black woman is supposed to be. That's a normal shape for a black woman. Today they have this stigma, uh, oh, girl, you, you look like you all skin and bones. You need to get in you eat something. Why? Because they are so embarrassed about their fat blubber lard asses that they have to make other sisters feel bad about themselves. So wait, Cap, you mean to tell me that in this time there wasn't no, oh, that's the white person's uh, size? No. There was there was no talk like that? Because they all look small. They all look slim and fit and, you know, look like they took care of themselves. And, that, and that's the thing. When, and by the way, this, when this, these things happened, this happened before the civil rights movement. Up until the mid-'60s and before that, the, some of the best, yes, and I understand that we got more rights, and I'm, I'm not dismissing what Martin King did and all the brothers to get us the rights 
I'm not dismissing that. They paved the way for freedom of speech and things of that nature. But when it comes to moral, moral standards, dress standards, and, and health standards, we were better pre-65 than we are post-65. And there's just look at the proof, okay? Now, is there, is there another one? There was two. All right. Now, this, uh, this, is, this is where I really, she stands her ground. This is Candace Owens on a panel with nothing but black folks, got him Killer Mike, and the audience is black. And you would think that if she was pro-Trump like a white girl, she stands her ground. She puts these brothers in check. This is number two? I'm sorry. I want the one. I might have told you wrong. I want the one. Oh, gosh. Hang on a minute. You talking about the one with T.I. and all that? Oh, I left my phone. Hang on a sec. Don't put the camera on me. Hey, it's cr- what's crazy is Cap just went from a, a video showing the nice debutantes, the brothers were dressed nice, night classy, and now fast forward, the dude's name, Killer Mike. I mean, them brothers, you think that was wearing them tuxes and the sisters in dresses, you think their name was a little shoot em up or uh, kill em, kill em, kill em dead or... Um, hey, and um, Killer Mike actually fought to have his name. They wanted to change his name to K I L L A, Killer Mike. But he said, no, it's Killer Mike. Yes, I did my research in rap. So the real, <laughs> the real Negro in him just said, no, I got to be all the way Killer Mike. I, no half stepping. Yeah. The powerful niggertry, niggertry just just continues. Yeah, to plague the mind of the but unsophisticated Negro. That 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 really goes to show you what we started to value, and that's why Esau was able to capitalize on the things that he did. Like, why is Sexy Red a uh, 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 a popping artist? Think about that. This female went and visited the president of the United States. Glorilla, should I say. Glorilla went and visited the president of the United States. Sounded like a complete ass on the camera while she was making her little interview on CNN. Like, come on now. Like, how is it that some hood rat chick that talks about F nigga free is able to go meet the president and the vice president? Like, come on. Like, at the height of the, the Kevin Samuels hype, when black men are being told that they are something, you go ahead and refuel the bitter black women to, to, to go ahead and, and put this message out there, and they all ran on it. So, That's why they don't do um, artists. Black, black artists don't talk about, oh, I got a healthy marriage. I got a family. Right. Because the record execs say that's going to piss off your fan base. Right. They they rather grab grab their ankles and drop it low. And and that that's that's the way they go. That's the way they go right. There. Evil communications corrupts good manners. It uh, you keep saying long enough like I want to know what university this dude went to to say it's a song like I hate this crap. Panda, panda. the nigga says panda mm. about 50 times 50,000 times and Dudes is riding around, and panda, 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 panda. The, 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 the niggas talking about a bear. Mm. And they put, this is all over the radio. But you say, hey, man, this is how you start a, um, a small business. And, and no, 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 don't rap about that. Get back to the panda brother. So, so look, so, and I, this is my fault. I didn't post it. This is the most important video. I dropped the ball. Yeah, I, didn't, I forgot to forward it. It's a four-minute video. This is Candace Owens standing at a hate crimes hearing before, I believe, Congress or the Senate. It's four minutes. We're going to play the whole thing. This is, again, this is the courageous part of the thumbnail. She is courageous. She is for black families. She is for conservatism. And she's for black um, cultural appropriation, if you could say that. Meaning she wants to see her people in the role that she knows that they can be, because why her grandfather raised her like that. And guess what? You're going to see her grandfather live in the court behind her. All right? We're going to see this man. Okay, play. It was unfair. It was not unfair. You had plenty of extra time. No, I did not. Ms. Owens. (laughs) Uh, Mr. Chairman, ranking. Pause. (laughs) So her grandfather is the man directly behind her in the light suit 
with the tie. Notice, even in his old age, he's still dressing like he did when she was a baby. Now, Candace Owens, that's her real hair. You can see some of the, you can see that's black hair. There's no weave in that, all right? And he, Grandpa, before he passed, was in her life. And this is why when we get to the next part, this is where I really, unfortunately, I, I just lost pretty much the, 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 the shred of respect that I had. Is, it was lost once we find this out. Okay, you're going to find out what I'm talking about. Play it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Mr. Collins, uh, thank you for having me here today. I received word on my way in that many of the journalists were confused as to why I was invited, and none of them knew uh, that I myself uh, was the victim of a hate crime when I was in high school. That's something that very few people Pause. know about me. Stanford High School, raised in White, um, uh, White Plains, New York, right outside of the city, and Dan Malloy, the governor's son, made a death threat, a racial death threat, which she was awarded $37,000. So she's speaking the truth. She is, was the victim of a hate crime or a, a, a threat thereof. And she was awarded by a federal court. Okay, play on. Uh, because the media and the journalists and the left are not interested in telling the truth about me because I don't fit the stereotype of what they like to see in black people. I'm a Democrat. I support the president of the United States, and I advocate for things that are actually affecting the black community. I'm honored to be here today in front of you all because the person Rewind sitting behind it. This is that the hate crimes bill, and I, she just said something. This is years ago. Rewind it just a little bit, please. Maybe 10 seconds. People know about me uh, because the media and the journalists and the left are not interested in telling the truth about me because I don't fit the stereotype of what they like to see in black people. I'm a Democrat. I support the president of the United States, and I advocate for things that are actually affecting Pause. So she said, um, and she, by the way, she was a Democrat. She said, I'm not a Democrat, and she support the president of the United States. And at that time, it was Trump. Because then when you hear about the sister, you think she's pro-Trump, and she says everything that white people want her to say. That's not true. She goes on to say that I don't fit the, the cookie-cutting image, and that's behind her. She bought, the, she bought the big up, the man behind her. Play on. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today in front of you all because the person sitting behind me is my 75-year-old grandfather. I've always considered myself to be my grandfather's child, and I mean to say that my sense of humor, my passion, and my work ethic all comes from the man that is sitting behind me. My grandfather grew up on a sharecropping farm in the segregated South. He grew up in an America where words like racism and white nationalism held real meaning under the Democrat Party's Jim Crow laws. Pause. Grandfather I want you to understand something. She is saying in front of everybody, I am my grandfather's child. When she grew up, he sat down and told her stories. He would say, he, you don't think he used words like, and these white folks surrounded my house, they used to shoot at my house, and he instilled in her, no matter what these devils do to you, you don't fit their stereotype. You succeed in life. He would feed her and pour this into her. The conservative, that's why she knows what black families can look like. Why? Because she saw her grandmother, her grandfather and her grandmother staying together. She saw what happened to her parents. They split apart when she was 11. She said, I'm my grandfather's child. This is important. And she's standing up before a hate crimes board. And she, in front of everybody, is saying, that man is the reason why I am a black man. So I, I like that about her. She's courageous. Read on. Play on. Segregated South. He grew up in an America where words like racism and white nationalism held real meaning under the Democrat Party's Jim Crow laws. My grandfather's first job was given to him at the age of five years old, and his job was to lay tobacco out to dry in an attic in the South. My grandfather has picked cotton, and he has also had experiences with a Democrat terrorist organization of that time, the Ku Klux Klan. They would regularly visit his home and they would shoot bullets into it. They had an issue with his father, my great grandfather. During my yeah. formative years, I had to. Do, do you see how uncomfortable that devil is? He can't. He can't it's, it's, it's like, oh, damn, I can't. I can't stop moving. Mm -hmm. It's hurt. I don't want to hear this. When he said Ku Klux Klan, he I got put my yep. pen in my pocket. Look at my face. Oh, let me put something else on my watch. And, it's and those. Cutting him. Them Klan members, listen, remember when we first got uh, out of. A post reconstruction, um, we, there were more black and in and, and, and Democrats and Republicans than any time in history for those 30 years or so. 
She's spitting facts, and that's why I'm telling you, this is the New York in her. She's she, she flowing, right? And she's bigging up granddad. Why am I? It's like, dang, he building up. Like, I'm pro Candace so and I like the sister. She's got courage. She's got more balls than Lamont, uh, whatever the guy's name is. she got more balls than most black men today, figuratively speaking. Now, we're going to finish this video, then we're going to show you where she is so, so lost. With all her black words and her bigging up her gra black granddaddy, she is so lost. Play on. The Ku Klux Klan. They would regularly visit his home and they would shoot bullets into it. They had an issue with his father, my great-grandfather. During my formative years, I had the privilege of growing up in my grandfather's home. It's going to shock the committee. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind that, rewind that, rewind that. Tell you that wait, 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 wait. Look at the Edomite to her left. It was her right but our left. Watch as she's, just watch, listen to her voice, look at his face. Mm. Hear her words, watch his face. Play it. To it, they had an issue with his father, my great-grandfather. During my formative years, I had the privilege of growing up in my grandfather's home. It's going to shock. Just shaking his, oh my God, I can't believe it. Play on, play on, let's just, let's just watch it, go ahead. Shock the committee, but not once, not in a single breath of a conversation, did my grandfather tell me that I could not do something because of my skin color. Not once did my grandfather hold a gripe against the white man. I was simply never taught to view myself as a victim because of my heritage. I, I learned about faith in God, family, and hard work. Those were Support. the only. So, give me Isaiah 29 13. That black man, and this is why Candace Owens has a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. The, her grandfather and her great-grandfather did raise her in Christian values, but the values they learned were, were inverted. They are not the right values. They, he learned the white Jesus, philosophy. even that black man who looks, he worked on a plantation, dried tobacco on that. He learned white Jesus. Okay, read. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. And that's what that's what she's doing. She and that's what the, the grandfather did because he, he, he dropped the ball because we're about to show you the next clip. She married white Jesus play and with their lips do honor me. And they'll say I was raised in a conservative Christian faith based household. My grandfather read on. But have removed their heart far from me. And their heart is through the precepts of men, not God. Read on. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And that's why everything that she learned is manifested through her actions. I like this. Sister. I hope she repent. And, well, she ain't going to like what I got to say. Or what we got, because her kids ain't got no hope. Um, boy, she got hope. Her grandfather, Lord, will the most have mercy. Now, finish this up. ...of my childhood. There isn't a single adult today that in good conscience would make the argument that America is a more racist or a more white nationalist society than it was when my grandfather was growing up. And yet we're hearing these terms sent around today because what they want to say is that brown people need to be scared, which seems to be the narrative that we hear every four years right ahead of a presidential election. Here are some things we never hear. 75% of the black boys in California don't meet state reading standards. In inner city there is, we've done show after show on this. There is a direct correlation between third grade reading levels and the ultimate result of them ending up in jail. If you are illiterate by the time you're third grade, the chances or probability of you becoming in prison increase by eight, over 80%. So she's speaking facts. She said 75% of black boys in California. What's the stats she dropped? This is why they can't stand her. She's speaking facts. Play on. Baltimore, within five high schools and one middle school, not a single student was found to be proficient in math or reading in 2016. Mm -hmm. the, single mother would, the single motherhood rate in the black community, which is at 23% in the 1960s. My Stop. This is a direct result of the white man's uh, eugenics programming. There were 23% single parent households in the 1965 pre 
After the 70s, watch what it increases to. It is absolutely, appallingly horrible. She's speaking truth. Play on. Was found to be proficient in math or reading in 2016. Mm -hmm. The single, mother would, the single motherhood rate in the black community, which is at 23% in the 1960s when my grandfather was coming up, is at a staggering 74% today. I am guessing there will be no committee hearings about that. There are more black babies born, there are more black babies aborted than born alive in cities like New York, and you have Democrat Governor Andrew Cuomo lighting up buildings to celebrate late-term abortions. I could go on and on, but my point is that white nationalism, white nationalism does not do any of those things that I just brought up. Democrat policies did. So pause. She is saying, yes, the Klan is wrong, and her grandfather lived during a time when they would shoot bullets into his house. If anybody could complain about being a victim, it was her grandfather's generation. She's making the claim that the Democrats, keep in that Isaiah about the liberals are vile, that the Democratic Party, through... The, the woke movement and all the, they're the ones that are destroying the black family. And it started in the mid-60s and beyond. Roe versus Wade, you see uh, good times, things of that nature. She quotes statistic after statistic after statistic, and she's true. The liberal, now the, the two, two heads of the same, we did a show called Two Heads of the Same Dragon. White Republicans are the damn devil. And they're going to tell you, hey, we don't like you niggers. The left uh, head of the dragon is ah, s -s -s -s, we love you. S -s -s -s. So they try to they stab you in the back, but they give you a glass of lemony before they do that. Re uh, read that Isaiah chapter thirty-two and verse five. Come on, the vile person shall be no more called liberal, right? Nor the churl said to be bountiful. The vile person. So liberals are vile, and she is telling the truth. But where she falls off the doggone horse is in the next point. I say this really for last. Cut up, man. Hey, Cap. She literally, yep. in her speech, said that the Ku Klux Klan was a democratic organization. Literally said that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's not white supremacy. It's the Democrats who are the Ku Klux Klan and push white supremacy. Like, and come on. The agenda today is just that they keep talking about... Um, being a victim. Black people are victims. She's standing up. She's standing up. Now, is that in on that? All right, come on. Term abortions. I could go on and on. My point is that white nationalism, white nationalism does not do any of those things that I just brought up. Democrat policies did. Let me be clear. The hearing today is not about white nationalism or hate crimes. It's about fear-mongering, power, and control. It's a preview of a Democrat 2020 election strategy, same as the Democrat 2016 election strategy. They blame Facebook, they blame Google, they blame Twitter. Really, they blame the birth of social media, which has disrupted their monopoly on minds. Pause now. So, the thumbnail said, Candace Owens, courageous intentions from a misguided sheep. Now, I want you to go back to Wikipedia. I said, I said we're going to come back. I'm going to show you that everything that Candace Owens said, I'm not trying to take anything away from her because she has a lot of logic, a lot of valid points. She is 100%. She's sleeping with her enemy. And I would be, and I don't know if she got married. I think she got married. Her great-grandfather was very, very well late in his years. I do not think her grandfather approved of her who she married. If she was raised, she had, he had a black wife, and he told all stories of what he'd been through, and he, she married the, the descendants of the same people that shot bullets in his house. All right? I understand that. Play. Read that. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go down where it says um, her, scroll down, not early career. It's, um, oh, gosh. Scroll up where it gives you all the tabs. I, it's going to say her married life or something like that. Early career. I think it's right here. Okay. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Scroll down. It's going to say where her husband is at. I, I understand it. Okay. Okay. Okay, 2019, and I think her grandfather died right around that time or a little bit later on. Click on spouse George Farmer. 
Now, give me the images. I just want to show her spouse's name is George Farmer. He's a British man. Let's get a look at him. And then I want us to show. The imagery is very important. Bishop Yawasab always talks about imagery. You want to talk all that black. You want to talk about all the problems in the black community. But yet you add to the problem of the black community when you do this, Candace. And sister, I, I applaud you for standing up against white power structure, but you sleeping with the white power structure, sister. So now, that is, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe his great-great-grandfather is black. I, I don't know, but I, I'm pretty sure he, this is an Edomite. That there is a Caucasian cap. That there is a Caucasian. That's a that's a call. That is a Caucasian. And she got the extra eyes. Like, ooh, look look at what I landed. Like, yeah. look at her eyes are really big. You know what I mean? She got those Sambo eyes. You yes. know those. You know those uh, caricature black caricature eyes. Right. That's the kind of eyes she got right there. And look, she's a nice looking sister. I I, I personally think she's a pretty woman. Um, and this is now. I want you to put the image back up of her grandfather. Okay. We ain't got to do a million things here. Let's just look at the grandfather. Do we think the grandfather would approve of this? Hell no. Look at her. And they don't show grandma, but grandma was from the Caribbean. She was a black woman from the Caribbean islands of St. Thomas, I believe it was. Hey, and Cap, let's not, let's not forget, she was born in 89. 89. So right there, that's the nineties. Yes, sir. Yes, that's the nineties. And and Grandpa was telling her stories about white folks mm -hmm. in the nineties. Yes, sir. And not only that, she spent a lot of time in North Carolina in her grandfather's house. She was raised in that's still the South, even though it's North Carolina. And she was raised hearing stories about her grandfather and his father, who the Klan had a problem with him. And he, and as a result, because his great grandfather was not no, he was not bowing down to these damn um, liberal uh, Ku Klux Klan members. Now, get me the video. Get me the video of why she married a white man. When are you posted it? Because now she's going to tell you about her mind. This sister, and that's why I say, everything she said, we built up a lot of knowledge, a lot, and a lot of stuff she said is biblical. Like about, she does not believe a man can have a baby. That's true. A woman should have her place in the household. A woman should value her history. All these things, she's, uh, she, she quotes facts that cannot be denied. She's very uh, austere in her position. But she, and this is where she can't stand the, with the Israelites, because the Israelites are going to agree with you. Were you right, sister? But were you wrong? We're not changing our viewpoint. Now, this is a short. Why did Candace Owen, by the way, that's a real hair right there. Why did she marry a white man? And the four emojis like things that make you go, hmm, play. Because uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it was a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people tend to marry their IQ, which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people. But actually, they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, wow. So wait, 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 wait. what you about to say? OK. All right. For people that. Are, all right. How can I say this nicely? When when a brother's looking at a sister, he's not saying, man, I wonder what college she went to. I wonder how smart she is. Man, brothers ain't thinking that. That's crap. What she just said was complete crap. And everybody know it. They IQ. See, here's the thing. He looks like he's a smart brother. See, here's the thing. IQ. Why you didn't get a scholarship? Why you had to take out a student loan? And then you you dropped out because your loans wasn't. But so I guess he was a college dropout too. You, you know, know what I'm saying? He, he, he can pay his loans back. Or whatever. You, you, he was from a. He, he's a white man from a royal British oh. family, by the way. Wow. Oh. So the pay divorced mom mm. grew up with the grandparents, uh, uh, probably in in the 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 low middle class. That that's the background that she comes from. So she marries British royalty, and now all of a sudden you're marrying because your IQ, because you have learned how to wield your tongue professionally. Mm -hmm. So you're a journalist. You've learned how to research information and state facts. That's the keys to journalism. You research information and you state the facts. You know how to research. You know how to rattle off facts. Your mind is very honed on making your point. You can win an argument. 
That does not mean that your IQ is so high that you're now above black people. Does not mean that at all. And that's exactly what she's saying. Um, and, and again, that's why the image is important. It's she, her heart should, she, was, she said, I'm her grandfather's child. What you're supposed to look for in a man is, is the values that you were raised with. And, and that just shows you how, the, the, how far the arm of white Christianity spreads. Because even though she was raised by a strong grandfather who had a black wife and told her stories about the history of his upbringing and what he had to do. How do you, how do you, how, when do you think he told him, yeah, yeah, babe, when, I, when daddy was a boy, my first job, I would bring the tobacco I pick in the field. And the reason why they bring up in addicts is those of you who have been in the South and, and I used to, I work in addicts on a regular basis. It can get 150 degrees in the attic in this part of the country. 150, you can get burned by metal. If they have metal, like uh, air conditioning, you can get secondary burns by metal, which I, I've gotten uh, the lowest degree burn. And that little boy was up there in them attics, drying, going back and forth all summer long, drying the tobacco out. He was telling that was being instilled in her. And she looked up to him. That's why she said, in the courtroom, this is my grandfather behind me. Where was that when you look for your husband? Where was that? That is the power of white Christianity, of white, white Jesus, that is him breaking through all of that and got through to Candace. So got she didn't the research the, the British royalty that he come from, the atrocities that they did to the, yep. to the neighboring nations and she, 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 no. the land that they stole, no, no. the people that they raped and pillaged, the, the, the false religion that they spread abroad mm-hmm. throughout the entire uh, world. She didn't research any of that. She married for her IQ. Not social and economic status, you know, not because he came to her like killers of the flower moon and straight up just bought her. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. So and this is why. If her grandfather and, and hey, listen, rest in peace to the brother. Um, Lord, we most have mercy is that he w- did not raise in the law. She learned a lot of values of conservatism and how black a family should look based upon what her grandfather been through. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7. Because we're not supposed to marry outside of our nation. And when you, you, when you are a black man, even if you raise in the Jim Crow South, and you don't learn the law of God, he should have. And, and I guess he was alive when they got married. And if he knew the law, he would have said, you wrong, granddaughter. I raised you in the laws of God. How You're not supposed to do that. She didn't have that. Read Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse three. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. With who? When you read verse one, it's talking about the other nations that we were warring against. We came out. Read on. Thy daughter thou shall not give unto his son. She was her. She stated, I am my grandfather's child. So he is supposed to say, no, sweetheart. You know, according to the law, you don't do that. Read on. Nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Right. And, and even the other nations knew that. Read on. For they will turn away thy son from following me. And that's what she was turned away. And now she follows the white man. Why? Because she goes to bed and she has children. She has children with, I believe it's three, two or three children with this Caucasian. Now, he might be a nice guy. He might have a high IQ. Doesn't change the fact that the law guides us. Read on. That they may serve other gods. And she serves white Jesus. Whether she wants to admit it or not, no matter what she says or how she says it, if you are spiritual and you keep the law as an Israelite, you would never marry your enemy. You would never marry another nation. So that's spiritual. So Candace Owen, if you're listening, sis, I admire a lot of qualities about you. I think that you went through a lot. But sister, you're wrong. And it would take a whole lot. If it's for her to repent, she's got to cast away everything that she's built up. She had to walk away from all that. And that's why scriptures say many are called, but few are chosen. Very important. All right. Now, um, before we go to law back attack, I want to one more thing real quick, because there's something she says. And I think she's I think there's some hope for her. I really go. It says full beast mode. I just want to get from 828 to 1103. So she's on a, um entire panel with Black Lives Matter. They got T.I., the Atlanta rapper, Killer Mike. Killer Mike is on. Killer Mike, he just, this guy, if he repents, he's, he's going to be a monster. But um, T.I. and there's a couple other um, 
liberal Negroes up there running their damn sucks. She handles her business. That's why I, I pray that she repent. Candace Owens, sister, there's many qualities about you that, that you are on point. And you stood up against the brothers and say a, a man can have a transgender, a man can have a baby. You stood up against drag queens in the classroom. You stood up against um, the, the democratic liberal movement to make black people victims and succumb to fear. You, you, all that's true. Play. It's important to identify so what you know, our... Real quick, real quick. This is a couple years ago. She looked a little younger. And um, the all-black board, Black Lives Matter, all, almost all-black audience. Killer Mike is the morbidly obese uh, gentleman in the middle. Uh, but Killer Mike, he, he, you know, he, he a rapping all that. He the big fat lard ass, about three, three sixty, three seventy. Uh, even though he's using his blubber to to support his uh, right hand, you can see that, right? And um, all the other negresses are on stage as well. Okay, and look at this, the brother with the damn, it's a scarf, a yellow scarf uh, around his neck. And that's Ti, please Ti, come on, man. Oh Ti, oh Ti. Uh, all right, thank the Lord, Ti ain't dressed like that. So we're going to let it play just for the first section, and we're going to go live back into that. She handled her business. Play. It's important to identify what our agenda actually is, and I think that the most important thing for people in this room to understand is that there is a very small window. Right now, the black vote is the most important vote in the country. There's a very small window before our vote's not going to matter. These conferences won't matter, matter, and us sitting here won't matter, because illegal immigration, if you're looking at the numbers, every new birth in this country, 60% of all new births are Hispanic Americans, and the Democrats are about, you, listen, listen, you're, you're saying, mm, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get to the point. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it. They are, I, I say illegal is the new black because it's true, and there's a reason why they're, they're advocating for open borders. Right now, our vote means a lot, but new births of black Americans have Support. stagnated. The reason why she still got this, she's holding on to the fact that she was raised in greater New York City. She's holding on to the fact that she was, ra she was raised by a, a man that dried tobacco as a child. A man that's grandfather got bullets shot in the house by the KKK. This is where she got that soul from. But now she's sleeping with the white man, had babies with the white man, with white Jesus himself. But she has an edge to her, and she is cutting them up. She's talking about... Listen, we better move now. And she's pro-Trump. Listen, the Democratic Party is wrong for black people. She's trusting in the robust head of the dragon. Not the smooth-talking, stabby in the back, give you a drink of water dragon. But the dragon that's in your face saying, hey, what else you got to black people? What else you got to lose? Vote Trump. So she's on that bandwagon. All right, play on. Population growth within black America has stagnated. So the things that I pay attention to are the numbers. I pay attention to the birth rates in this country, which is why I'm, I'm pro putting something down to stop illegal immigration. The second thing that I think is really important, and you may have heard me testify in front of Congress, is the illiteracy rates that are facing black America. 75% of black boys in California can't pass a reading exam. Across Baltimore, they looked at five schools, they couldn't find a single black boy that was, a, that was a, a single black child that could pass a basic reading or a math exam. So people, I caught a lot of slack because I, I said- In the audience right now, they bubbling. They bubbling because she, she they, it's like um, when Stefan was about to be stoned, Stefan was hitting him with all of the, the history, boom, boom. And then they just getting mad and getting mad and they get ready to stone her. They want to stone this sister because she is telling them about the things that they, they know and it's truths that hurt them. And, but she is coming from a perspective that they're not used to. She's, she's saying it. She's not a victim. Okay, T.I., as strong as he is, as much as he rap and all that, you can have the time in your life. That brother is, a, them as victims. These rap, they are a bunch of victims. If you choose the name Killer Mike, you're a victim. Because that means you, are you a killer who? You a killer Arabs? Are you a killer white men? Who are you a killer of? Uh, he was, you he, ain't a killer of no white men. He got that name because he was killing niggas in battle raps. In Kill, oh, okay, well, thank the Lord he didn't kill nobody. But still, he, he, and he was trying to be more better, more dominant than the other rappers. It's about, instead of working together with rappers, it's about, I'm better than you. I, I body you, nigga. I'm a better rapper than you. I'm this. I'm that. That's a capitalistic agenda. That's a Caucasian agenda. Yeah, he, ain't kill, he ain't not killing them calories. Ain't that right, Officer Gabe? He's a resident lardback. I'm going to get ace in a minute. Play on. This is a Democrat plantation, but I meant what I said. 
If you look historically at what the plantations were when we were slaves, there were three things that were necessary for them to run. The first was our ignorance. Black Americans were not allowed to learn how to read unless we would have our limbs chopped off. And that was because an educated mind cannot be enslaved. So the fact that our education, that our schools are in this condition in the inner cities and all throughout America and not a single candidate is talking about it is problematic to me. I think that that's a huge negotiating tool for me. We need to be talking about the inner city schools. Another component and this is the biggest issue that I think is facing black America today, which was important to uh, maintaining the plantations, was the breakdown of family. The biggest issue now facing pause. black And she goes on and on. It's a great, it's a great interview. I was, I, that's why I watched all this before I really knew that she was married to a British uh, family, a white man. All of that bravado, all that courageous talk, but your black ass goes home and sleeps with the the man who benefited from everything you just mentioned, who set up a system. Now, I don't give a damn if he actually did it himself, but the British monarchy, like Officer Matthew said, they, remember, the, the America came out of Britain. <laughs> yes. It was illegal immigrants. Yes. Forced illegal immigration or migration. And, and so everything she said, if, 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 listen, if she had a black husband with black children, listen. It's a different conversation. She is a hypocrite because she stands for black and black conservative. Trump, go Trump, get free of the Democratic Party. But everything that you do and you go home and you sleep with another nation. Sister, the truth shall make you free. But if you be free, she said that a slave, enslaved mind cannot be, uh, she said, an educated mind cannot be enslaved. Well, sister, you may be educated from the white man's knowledge, but you have not been biblically educated. You have not get the understanding of the, uh, of the Bible, because if you did, you would be free. And the first step you would do is, guess what, sis? You got to leave that man. You got to walk away from everything you know. And guess what? Jesus is black. Moses is black. Jesus' mother looked like you. And all of the things that they told you about the Bible and Jesus, you don't understand. As much college as you got, you don't understand that. But, sis, you have a zeal, and we admire that about you. You need to repent, Candace Owens, or the Lord is going to judge you. And what I mean by that, he might not do it to you 75. You need to come out of America's doctrine, America's Christian white nationalist doctrine of white Jesus and not keeping God's laws. All right? Is there more on that? Almost done. So with that, listen, we could have done a two-part show. We're going to go to Laura Back Attack. The main thing is the show is Candace Owens, a courageous yet misguided sheep. So we didn't even get to the show. We have to do the show. We didn't even get to the show. She got fired. She got fired for making a comment about Hitler, which wasn't even talking about Hitler in the way that she said she was. And she was just fired last week because of that. Next week we're going to touch on it. I'm sorry. I should have covered that. But um, I just wanted to show you her history her character, and ultimately how she's misguided. And those of you, um, check out her. Um, in this last week, she got fired. Very prominent show she did with Ben Shapiro. She got fired because of anti-Semitic comments, which is actually taken completely out of context. She did not say anything about Hitler and admiring him being positive at all. Okay, they just, they, they boxed her in, and she was wrongfully terminated. But she, in her mind, still thinks that she's right. So next week, we're probably going to plug a little bit more about what happened. But the point is, you see her background. You see what she did. Long story short, I hope you got something out of tonight's show. Um, we're going to go to yes, sir, Officer Matt. Hey, Cap, I just want to know what mommy and daddy are going to say later on. You know, her in-laws. Ooh, oh, when yeah. she starts talking this pro-black stuff, right. she already got fired. Yeah, yeah. So what she got to lose? Nothing. Right. You know, she already got three kids by a British prince or whatever the hell he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to see what the in-laws are going to say. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I posted a video, but I think we'll get hit for it. Um, it, it, was, um, it showed like it was a brother. It was in a scene. He was talking to a sister, and he's like, can you go over there? And, and it okay. was like quick Wh one. Why you load that? Pull up the images of her and her husband. There's, three, there's four images and um, it's, uh, it's on tonight's content. It was posted at 823. 
So again, until she acknowledges her offense, there's her and her husband. I th- she's pregnant. You can see her maternity clothes on. Okay, I don't know what baby that was. She started getting pregnant in 2018. Uh, there he is. That pro- there, there's the American flag, right? This, she's, that's her natural hair. Play on. Next, next slide. There's her at her wedding. That is clearly a Caucasian. He All looks right? like he raped women in college. Hey, look, and that's and that, that's and I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, when you're and I'm not we're not saying he is, but it, he looks like he like just like a lot of people, like the guy in the back with the bald head. He looks like a serial killer from the back. That's the way this that, that most of them are white, right? So we can say that we're not saying he is a serial killer. Guys like this, this Caucasian. Let me give an example. Here, this, this is the point, right? I'm going to show you the irony of this. She's a victim of a hate crime of an American royal figure. Dan Malloy was a governor of Connecticut. Her son threatened her life, and she was awarded a, Nash, a federal summary. She married the same class of white men that's his peer. Yes. Show you her mind. She's destroyed. I just put two and two together. That is the British version of the same devil that victimized her with hate crime. Let's, let's really, let's really understand what I just said. That's that's called that's called racial trauma. Yes. It, it's a, a race-based traumatic stress. This is what it's called. And some of those symptoms are that you can. Um, Let's see, recurring reactions, headaches, chest pains, insomnia, hypervigilance, mm. low self-esteem, mm-hmm. and mentally distancing from the traumatic events. Right. So you pull yourself away from all of these traumatic events that actually happened and actually run right into the same traumatic event right. that happened. Hey, th- th- this one-minute clip is going to pretty much everything is going to sum it up. Right. And it's also called Stockholm Syndrome. When you have a feel of admiration for the very ones that have oppressed you. Now, we're going to play this video off some Micah. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we ain't going to get hit, are we? That's all right. Okay. Hey, hey. What did oh, what I is the brother right there? My eyes not deceive me, or am I looking at the goddess Isis herself? Can you, uh, can you do me a favor, my brown skin, ain't you? Can you tap that white girl? That, from that's what she did right there. Yep. That's yep. Candace Owens right yep. there. Yes. Black people, this. They can't read. They can't do this. Let me go get that, that, that red devil over there. <laughs> well, why, watch what she go get. Watch what she go get. Look at, look at this. Lord help. That's, that's what she did right there. Yes. That's what Candace Owens did right there. All these brothers, it's, it's probably brothers out brothers I heard of the activists, probably well educated. She wouldn't got that right there. Lord wish you repent. Sleeping with the enemy. Never trust thy enemy just like his wickedness so too. I'm butchering it. So this is a perfect example. This is the thing with Candace Owens. I'm telling you, I, when I, before I really learned about her, her marital history, I was very proud of some of the things she said. She stood up in the face of victimization. She stood up. Amongst the narrative of how black women are supposed to be, she, she denounces transgender, uh, men having babies, so-called. She denounced the breaking up of the black family. She denounced the, the moral standards of the music industry. All of that's good stuff. But she, her core of where her heart is, is in the hands, literally, of her enemy. Now, with that being said, all praise to the Lord. Um, and we're going to touch next week on how she got fired but this is a side of her life that they're not going to talk about. We wanted to bring that to you today. Go to the Laura Back Attack. Shalom. Stay tuned. Yeah. You can tell by my gate that I'm all in. You can tell by my faith that I'm all in. Front line with the truth, I'm going to fall in. Even if it's a dead end, going all in. You can tell by the things I'm involved in. I can lose it. Yeah. You can tell by my gate that I'm all in. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Most high and grace bless. It's going to be a short, long back attack tonight. Let me first start off by saying, uh, if you watch the show in the 60s and, be, and before that time, there, were, there was a very low 
rate of obesity in the black community. Uh, since the fathers have been taken out of the house, you see a sharp rise in obesity amongst all segments of the black community, meaning men, women, and children. It's an epidemic. It's a, it's a first-rate Babylonian or a.k.a. American problem, and we can fix it, right? So I want to start first with one scripture, and it starts with men. If you want to fix Sirach 31, I believe it's uh, eat as it becomes man. It's either 16 or 15. If you want to fix a nation, it ain't going to start with the women. Every nation, the men are leaders of that nation. Women have their place, and there's not a subservient um, demeaning role. Women are very important in the structuring and ordering of a nation. It must start first with the American man. It must start first with the tribe of Judah, the American black man, the head tribe. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 31, verse 16. Eat as it becometh the man. Men. Men lead nations. Men set policies and hold people accountable. Read. Those things which are set before thee. That's all my food. Read on. And devour not. Don't be a damn pig. That's how Killer Mike is 150 pounds overweight. Killer Mike needs to lose the weight. Killer Mike's got a sharp mind, but when his mind is morbidly obese, how do you think Killer Mike really feel when he takes his shirt up and look at him? You think Killer Mike is really happy with himself? Being visceral fat all around his organs? Yeah, you happy with that? Come on, man. Read on. Least thou be hated. Right, and that's why we're making jokes. We, we joke about morbidly obese people because it's, it's clear what they've become. They follow the ways of their enemy. Read on. Leave off first for manner's sake. That's the first start of l learning to leave off, meaning not eat so much food. That's, you got to leave off. Read on. And be not unsatiable, least thou offend. If you're unsatiable, you're eating five, seven, eight times a day. Why? Because you're not eating for nutrition and help. You're eating because it's a desire. And it is the foods that's destroying us. Okay, read on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. That means, that means you're greedy. That's just symbolic. You get at the table and you're the first fat ass to put your big chubby hands on the freaking chicken or whatever else in front of you. Okay, read on. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. And that's the key. It comes with eating a little. And ain't talking about having with every five meals and you have a half a banana, one carrot, half a celery. No, it's talking about you don't need to eat as often as you, you need to eat infrequently. And then it talks about moderation in other scriptures. So I want to pull up the white man because if you hear from Dr. Dr. I've talked about Dr. Berg, he is. Out of all the YouTube personnel, I, this guy is really aligns with the Bible, okay? And I ain't plugging his show. You don't have to subscribe to him, but I think there's value. I wish there was a black. Actually, Dr. Bobby Price is kind of filling that role. Play this. It's a short four-minute video. Watch this. I had a question recently presented to me. Um, they wanted to know what's the best pattern of intermittent fasting. So I'm going to give you my opinion on that. Okay, so there's a lot of different patterns you can follow. You can do it daily, and within that daily pattern, you can have like an eight-hour window of eating and a 16-hour fast, a six-hour window of eating, and a 18-hour fast, and then a four-hour window of eating. Let's say you, you ate at uh, one, and then at four, and then you had 20 hours of fasting, okay? Pause and then you have uh, every... So I want to give a shout out to Deacon Asap because Deacon Asap introduced me to Dr. Berg about eight years ago. And I kind of like, yeah, whatever. Oh, come on, Deacon. Uh, come on. Right, right. And he said, how are you going to know if you don't at least try? So I've been for probably 90% of the time been doing a 20 and 4 for all these years, meaning I eat all my food in a four-hour eating window, sometimes less than that. And throughout the day, I don't have anything but I have – Seltzer water, mineral water, black coffee, tea, nothing with calories, nothing at all, all right? And it really helps you to manage stress. So 16 and 8 is very popular. This is intermittent fasting. This aligns with leave off first. This aligns with very little is sufficient for a man. This aligns with um, the Lord made medicine out of the ground. This is what all of us should be doing. I don't even care if you're already uh, in shape. You should be intermittent fasting every single day. It's not just for weight loss and being a disgusting, morbidly obese lard ass. 
Even someone that doesn't need to lose any weight gets a tremendous amount of value and benefits from eating like this. And it is biblical. Read on. Play on. Fasting. And then you're fasting on the weekends or maybe once or twice a week. And maybe you're doing a whole 24-hour fast, okay? So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Well, here's the problem with these two right here. Every other day or once or twice a week. So I've gotten a lot of feedback from many people that do it every other day or a couple times a week, and they nearly always have severe hunger, brain fog, sleep problems. And that is because they haven't given their body a chance Pause to- Pause real quick. Get me sound sleep. If, here's the thing, I challenge everybody to listen to this show. I don't even care if you tune me out by now. If you want to increase your health, Try this. Do a four-hour eating window. Cut the carbs, sugars, and processed foods. Eat a lot of vegetables. Eat healthy keto. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 20. Come on. Sound sleep. What? Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. So wait a minute. How can you have the statement, very little is sufficient for men well nurtured, but now here you get moderate. So which one is it? It's both. You don't need to eat that. You could eat once or twice a day at the most, and in that Eating, eat moderately. The Bible is perfect. It's per and guess what? I'm telling you it works. We got brother after brother after brother after brother, 100 pounds, 150 pounds down, and they lost the weight and kept it off. Changed their whole lives. And it's still bending for them after they uh, recover from lardism or, morbidly obese or morbid obesity. Read. He riseth early. Right, so you're going to get better sleep. You're going to get up faster. Read on. And his wits are with him. It don't take you 15 minutes to get in the damn shower, Lord ass. Read on. But the pain of watching uh -huh. and choler and pogs of the belly. All these gastrointestinal problems, all this irritable bowel syndrome, all that crap. Read on. Are with an insatiable man. Why? Because you did not eat very little sufficient and you did not eat in moderation. You are insatiable. That's why you eat seven times a day. The white man told you breakfast, lunch, dinner. Snacks in between, and don't forget, you got a thing called dessert that is a post-dinner uh, um, food consumption. The average American eats five times a day, and I don't give a damn if you have a 100-calorie Oreo cookie. That's a friggin' meal. It spikes your insulin. If you want to help your health, you need to become insulin sensitive. That's what diabetes 2 is. In pre -di it's insulin resistance. You can, all of us can hit, fix ourselves. 90% of the problems, health problems in this country we could fix if we would practice what we're reading here. Play that. Apt. So I'm going to recommend you stay consistent because why wouldn't you want to do some form of fasting on a regular basis? Okay, I'm talking about every day. So let's talk about what specific pattern that you would want to do on a daily basis. So there's a lot of benefits to fasting, but the goal would be to help heal insulin resistance, to help lower insulin, to help our bodies reset so what I would do is I would base this pattern based on your body, your physiology. If your metabolism is fast and you're younger, and then I would probably go with this right here, which is a 16-hour fast with an 8-hour window. But the older you are, the slower the metabolism, the longer... Pause. And this is why it is, I'm telling you, a lot... Most people in their 20s and 30s don't have a lot of health problems. As you get into your 40s, you're going you're to see if you ain't there yet things you need more time this is why it will benefit and most people that have problems with their blood pressure in these it, it, onset is late 30s beginning early 40s forget about 16 and 8 do a 20 and 4 or do one meal a day that's what you need to, i'm just telling you from experience do that do that do that it is absolutely essential and check this guy's page out check doctor go to these 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 doctors online who actually are getting major banning uh, the, the all type of uh, YouTube algorithms are slowing. They used to get like millions and millions of videos for each view, for each um, millions of views for each video. Now he's down to hundreds of thousands. They are purposely steering people away from holistic uh, fasting practitioners and forcing them to uh, to 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 not be in the top of uh, search engines and YouTube. They're doing all these things to dissuade people because this is how you heal your body, and this is based upon these. This is a biblical. Uh, uh, format, but he he's not saying it, but I'm it is. Play on. Fast, okay. So you want to gradually work up to fasting for 20 hours and having a four-hour window, 
and eventually going to one meal a day, which is OMAD. That would be the best thing that a person could do. So the white man tell he is a doctor, he's a chiropractor, but he also specializes in many health, and he's actually he'll help to recover 7,000 plus people of all different races, blah, 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 blah. He's telling you the best form is one meal a day healthy keto. And that's what all of the lard asses on the fat back chat are doing. One meal a day healthy keto. Some of the big fat giant uh, brothers that make Gabe look like Richard Simmons actually do one meal every other day. And they can do it. Why? Because fat is a stored reserve of calories and energy. When you get to ketosis, you begin to burn that for energy, if you will. All right, play on. We're almost done. Especially when they're in their 50s or older. So that way, they're being consistent. Their body's adapting to it. They're doing it on a regular basis. They have a chance to keep insulin really, really low and allow the body to heal over a period of time. But I really think it's important to do this gradually. So I would recommend maybe starting out here. That's why I disagree with him. Because if you start up gradually, you lard asses get comfortable. And you can eat three times a day in an eight-hour window. You're right back to America. The hell with all that crap. If you can do a 24-hour biblical fast, you can jump your fat ass right into 20 and 4. And then get, go to a four-hour window, cut the carbs, sugars, and processed food. Then work your way up to one meal a day. So listen, with that, I'll check this guy out. Check Dr. Bobby Price. Anybody else, if you got some suggestions, there's another, Dr. Becky, um, we played her. She's all for eating less frequently. It works, and I challenge all of you. And once we fix the brothers, we come up for you portly princess platoon. You fat sisters, and guess what? The worst tribe out of all in IUIC, I don't give a damn if it offends you, the worst tribe is Judah. Black American women, you the fattest of all. Okay, we love you to death because there's a lot more of you to love. Get it? But the bottom line is you got to lose the weight. And it got to start first with the black man, the tribe of Judah. We must fix ourselves first. So with that, um, we're going to go now to a, a brother practicing for a national dive team. And he's practicing in the backyard in a kiddie pool. Now, not that large back. There's another video. I posted it. Now, disclaimer, if your children are in the room, explain to them. That's Iron Mike. Explain to them that this is not normal. Well, actually, it is, it's actually, unfortunately, it is normal. It is, it's becoming more normal because one in every two black adult in this country is obese. So let me re rescind that last statement. Now, this lard ass is a smooth 404. Okay, you can tell he's got all kind of roles. He's got more rolls than all of the bakeries in New York put together. Okay, not really, but he's, got a, he's very fat. Mike is already laughing. Okay? Play! <laughs> Pause. I want us to look at the wings. Yes. Let us look. It almost looks like, and I, forgive me, it almost looks like a large pair of women's breasts. The silhouette. Those are not. Those are men. Yes, men br titties. Now, I will say this. I don't know why Mike's laughing about this, but his form is exquisite. Look at the form of the lard back. Mike is at, I think this, they, they, I think they took a video and just threw Mike in this. But nonetheless, Mike would still be laughing probably. Play on. The form is exquisite. Look. At the end, the leg was off a little bit. He could have kept it straight. Um, I just want to let you know that we do not know how, but I can guarantee that that pool uh, life ended right there. Okay? Shout out to that Larbax form. It stops it right there. So, children, you don't want to look like this. Even if your daddy and mommy at home look like that, don't look like that, okay? Now, save the best for last. Uh, can we please, I'm going to do this. Turn the camera. Okay, I don't care. Wait a minute. Can I, can I do it? Now, now turn the camera. 
We have two resident lard backs in the back. We're turning the camera. I'm, I'm breaking actual format of the show real quick. I know it's late. Now, if I may, we're back in the IT section. There are a lot of buttons back here. That guy's in shape. He's got the light chair. Uh, this is Gabe. We call him Farmer Gabe. Farmer Gabe. My brother here, he's actually not morbidly obese. He's just regular obese, right? This gentleman right here is just, he's got a pot belly. It's, it's, it's like second trimester pregnant. I am going, he is sucking it in. Is that a girdle? What the hell is going on? No. We're going to show you a video of this resident lard back Asa. He only got to lose about 40, 50 pounds, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you a lard back? Yes, sir. Did I force you to accept that term? No, sir. But Gabe's fat on you. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. Let us now go back. Let me just, I had to do it. I'm trying to be lighthearted tonight. Now, to the left, look at your screen. The skinny brother is named Officer Edris, and he is a very fast individual. Now, if you look at the brother in the white shirt smiling, because I have made a statement that lard backs are not to, I disagree with that. The lard back has many hidden talents. Even though Asa is on the borderline of being obese, not quite as fat as Gabe to the right of him. Actually, no, that's not Gabe in the pit. Gabe is actually sitting next to him right in the room right now, but Ezra is to his uh, right. Now they are at the community garden ready to run, and this is very impressive. Lard back in white, ripped guy to the right. Play! <laughs> Look at the speed of the lard back! <laughs> now, those men are not <laughs> laughing because he won. They're laughing because they are shocked that a lard back won a race. Again, it goes back to, look at him. Even he's laughing. He's like, I can't believe I got my ass whooped by a lard back. He's, he's like, look, I'm ripped. He looked down and he's I'm ripped. The lard back beat me. And now they're all consoling him. And they actually pat him on the back later. It's okay. You lost to a lard back. Anyway, so that's our resident lard back officer. Now, he, he's losing a little weight. He's, he's losing some weight. I got to give him credit. He was way fatter than that last year. So, He's coming in. So with that, hey, listen. Look at Ezra's cheesing, right? Um, all praise the Lord. But look, uh, put the camera back on me. At the end of the day, obesity is a first-rate problem. You brothers and sisters, you have to be about it. We got to attack this, this health revolution, and wait till Deacon Isaac rele unleashes that class. And wait till about men's conference. There's going to be body fat percent. You lard asses going to fat jail. You watch. Okay, you're in trouble, big trouble. Ain't that right, Gabe? He don't understand. Gabe doesn't understand. He about to fix his obesity now. Can we, do we have a picture of Gabe when he first came in the truth? Gabe looked like a rail, and he put on about 65 pounds of blubber. Now it looks like two bees stung him in the face. Like, as in, like, two minutes ago. Like, you know. Anyways, all right, that's an, I'm 48-year-old humor. I'm... Law. Hey, with that, I'm Captain Shem. We don't have a picture of Resident Larbat Gabe. Do we have it? Pull it up! This is love. If you think this is not love, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, this is Gabe from 11 years ago. I, I, some of you are like, why is he doing this? Because I have to. Here is Gabe before, and then we're going to pan the camera after. Gabe made a, a solemn oath that he would lose the weight, and I'm holding him to it. Ah! Is that? That is, I can't recognize him. Actually, that's medium Gabe. There's a picture of him. Where he's, that's Gabe back then. Uh, his garment fit correctly. And now today he's he's not very happy right now. I don't really care because he's young to be my son. And if he's my son, I would not let my son become a obese individual. Turn the camera now, please. With the real Gabe, please stand up. I have to do it, Gabe. Take it with a grain of salt. I got one better cap. Now, I I, wait, actually, Gabe has lost some weight. I got Gabe and Asa together. I am. I must. Yes. I got Gabe and Asa together. Gabe has lost some weight. All right. 
Are we showing him on the camera? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't care how you feel. I got to do this. Now, the one that's in the red is Gabe. Officer Gabe. Now, to the right is the same cheesy. Same cheese that won the, the Lardback race. They're standing in Louisiana Bayou somewhere with the trees, the, the weeping willows. And Gabe is standing there ripped as can be, happy and jovial. Now turn the camera now. Ace is still cheesing the same way. Now, now they have a obese Gabe and a overweight Asa. And guess what? I love these brothers, and both of them are going to lose the weight, or they're not going to camp, as long as Deacon Isaac solidifies that. With that, hey, listen, I love these brothers. I talk to them like this behind the scenes. Love them brothers, and they need to lose a whole lot of weight. All praise to the Lord. Hey, give alms. To give alms at your local school, drop an envelope in the alms box. To give online via PayPal at iuic.neworleans at israelunite.org. To give to the Booster Club, hey, make sure you shout out to the Booster Club. At IUIC Fundraising at israelunite.org. Land Fund. You heard a bishop put out the vision for next year's Passover. We need our own land. Let's make it happen. Send your, send your donations via PayPal. Make sure you put land in the notes. How? PayPal. Israel at IsraelUnite.org. Label it land. We're seeking your assistance to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. The QR code is in your lower right-hand corner. Thank you for your time. Hey, shalom, Israel. Hey, thanks, Mr. We went about 15 minutes over. We appreciate your honest um, reflection of the show. If you have ideas, let us know. I hope that you got something out of Candace Owens about uh, she's very courageous, but she's a misguided sheep. And um, if you got some ideas for the show, put it in there. Listen, live back attack, I don't per personally behind the scenes. Um, Gabe, I, I respect Gabe. I respect Asa, but I'm not going to yield to them. I'm going to help these brothers to be the best that they can be. We're not, black men is not supposed to be obese or overweight. We're not supposed to be like that. And when you're young, you can fix it now. That's why I stay on these brothers, and that's why I stay on all the brothers. And now I should, because I know what can happen to them. If you don't, if you don't maximize your health, you're going to have problems later on in life. And and sometimes you got to show brothers tough love, and you do it with a little bit of fun. So, well, all praise to the Most High. Hey, with that, we are your hosts. I'm Captain Shem, Officer Matthew, Officer Micah. And with the absence of Officer Mikael, he, he's with us in the spirit. With that, we say shalom, shalom as well. Love. I see matches in the game. I see hunters slaying demons. I see fire on this earth coming down like Hiroshima. I see prophets rising up, prophesying scriptures cutting. I see Christ, he coming back.